I'm Vegeta, Princess of All Saiyans. Hey guys, welcome to today's video. And today I'm doing yet another installment of What If Vegeta Was Female, Part 4. And with Part 3, we had a lot of fun exploring the um, beginning of the events of um, Planet Namek. Which, um, the story is quite developed since its first initial part in part one, starting from the um, end of the events of Bardock, the father of Goku, where we get to, where we explored a little bit of what female Vegeta's life was actually like. Being basically disregarded from her father, who wanted a son, aka her male counterpart from the original anime, and her, her both being disregarded by both King Vegeta and Lord Frieza really put our Vegeta in in a sort of um in that sort of constant need to sort of prove something not really to them but more or less to herself and I think it's important that we understand this part of um, Al Vegeta in this story, in this timeline, just so we understand what she's more or less about now that we're about to enter into part four. Now, now as we know, the events of um, the beginning, beginning of Dragon Ball Z pretty much played out as per normal, except that... Um, Goku and Vegeta seem to um, actually bond over their battle instead of um, becoming, you know, bitter, bitter enemies, which, as we know, goes on through most of Dragon Ball Z in the original anime. Whether or not they're actually forming a friendship or a team-up yet remains to be seen, but there is something diff very different about our Vegeta from the normal Vegeta at this point of the story. Hmm. Especially with her unexpected team up with, um, with Gohan and Krillin and um, basically sneak attacking Zarbon and taking him out. When he, when Zarbon tries to attack Krillin to steal the Dragon Ball, which is where our last part concluded. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, with that, now officially continuing from where we left off, Vegeta forms her alliance with Gohan and Krillin. Vegeta is not really wanting the immortality wish, but she's willing to use it on herself as a absolute like like the, the nuclear option that's like the nuclear option they just want to prevent freezer at this point not getting his wish i mean you can't make a a being that powerful immortal that's 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 a nightmare and this vegeta knows it this vegeta was not favorite this um, Vegeta didn't have any of that favoritism that the original one got from Frieza. All those, um, all those little favors that Vegeta, quite frankly, really didn't appreciate. And of course, and this all being to the fact that um, Vegeta was born Princess Vegeta instead of Prince of Vegeta. Very similar to her male counterpart, just as powerful, but for some reason just wasn't getting the respect she deserved. Mind you, neither did the male counterpart, but what Al Vegeta went through was a lot worse. So with that, Vegeta, having taken a liking to Gohan and his potential, and of course her sort of liking towards Gohan's father, she decides it's best she actually joins forces with them and they might be able to secure the Dragon Balls, get them, and s perhaps even steal them from under Freeze's nose 
After all, they've got the Dragon Radar, and right now Freezer has no scouters to find any of them. Hmm. And some time has passed since um, Zarbon's death, and it's obvious to Freezer that Zarbon is not coming back. A bit of a surprise to Freezer, but not really. I mean, you know. <laughs> Having a power level over 20,000 is not really a surprise to me, Zarbon, as he sta stated earlier, as he states in the anime. But nevertheless, Freezer has called for the Ginyu Force because Vegeta is obviously is obviously too much of a nuisance, and he's um pretty much wiped out all of Frieza's best subordinates that Frieza brought with him. Mm. So with that, Frieza, Gohan and Krillin plan a little bit of a ship assault on Frieza in order to steal the Dragon Balls. With um, Vegeta basically going straight into a ship and you know blowing it up like he does, like um, I'm sorry, she does. Okay, I, I, I'm confusing myself. Um, she blows it up just like her male counterpart does in the original. The only difference is she did, she she's not bad. She wasn't hurt in any way from um, Sarbon because she she took him out before he transformed. Like I said, he's just flown straight in there, a complete surprise attack, and has straight away attacked the engine, leaving Frieza running to find out the source of the commotion while Vegeta's moving freely in the ship and Frieza does clue on pretty quickly that Vegeta's going for her for Frieza's five Dragon Balls she already had collected and of course our heroes have two of them at the moment the one Krillin brought back and the one Gohan sort of stole from Vegeta but Vegeta you know let that one go after all, they're teaming up now. Now, when Freezer's thinking of going back to secure the Dragon Balls, another blast hits the um, ship from the outside. That is Krillin and Gohan um, taking pot shops, taking pot shots at the ship, um, just causing more of a distraction, giving Vegeta more time to throw the throw the Dragon Balls out the um, out of Freezer's window and run off with them. Look who has the last laugh now, Freezer. And like that, the gang have actually managed to locate all seven Dragon Balls. And with that, they all land in their nice, neat little row, and the guys are able to co collect them all in one spot, and they they just lay low and hide. Um, Vegeta does try to get Krillin to use the Dragon to. <laughs> to summon the dragon, but that doesn't work, you know, no password. After all, Guru didn't actually think they'd actually be a success. And so, with that, Krillin just goes, Oh, well, these must have a Namekian password or something. I can just go over to Guru, take Gohan with me. We can get the password and Gohan will be a lot stronger. That way we can surely take on this freezer guy if he shows up. All those, those, um, what are they? The, 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 the Gaiu Force? That is Ginyu Force. Ginyu Force, you little shrimp. Oh. So with that, so with that, Vegeta pretty much realizes the Dragon Balls are pretty much safe at this point. No scouters. So Vegeta says, very well, I will go along with your plan, but only if I get this power up as well. If Frieza does come, I am going to be the best chance we have of ending this. And well, reluctantly, Krillin and Gohan um, actually agree to this. And well, they do, since um, there's no one there that can actually sense energies and pick them off they're flying to gurus at full speed getting there in record time and well they actually manage to um get the password from guru because dende is coming back with them and um 
Vegeta and Gohan do indeed get their full potentials unlocked. And for Vegeta, who's um, still only just above the 20,000 mark, you know, just stronger than than Dodoria and Zarbon in his transformation, I um, having his power having his power awakened like that actually puts his um, power significantly high. How high? We'll find out because the Ginyu Force is in route. But however, they're actually too late to get there. They actually do manage to summon the dragon. And v Vegeta just um, sort of asks, so what do you guys even want with these bowls anyway? What do you think? To wish back all the people you killed in our planet? Oh, uh, yeah, um, guess I should say sorry about that. But in my defense, that was Nappa. <laughs> That's true, it was Nappa. That's good, we give Princess Vegeta a bit of a personality, a bit of, um, a bit of comedic relief early on. All right, so with that, Krillin summons the, the dragon and they actually managed to get all their wishes. Freezer, who's like, not even cluing on to what's going on, at least. Definitely not right away. But meanwhile, the Ginyu Force ships have indeed landed. And of course, Piccolo insisting that he um, be there on planet Namek to um, help with the Battle of Frieza. He gets the first two wishes for himself, like in the original, but there is time for the third wish. And well, since the um, Namekian Drag Wars can bring back someone more than, more than once, they use it on Chiaotzu. So Chiaotzu and Piccolo are both brought back. Piccolo also transported Namek and of course is left, you know, randomly somewhere on the planet. And well, with that, Frieza did eventually spot the dragon. And it's basically um, left. But well, Frieza did see the general direction. Frieza is livid and angry. He knows someone has used the Dragon Balls. And with the Ginyu Force now arrived with the Scouters, they know exactly where they are. And Frieza, oh, he's not, he's not missing out on um, torturing the fools who decided oh let's let's steal Freezer's Dragon Balls oh no he ain't letting this go he actually goes on the front line with the Ginyu Force and the battle against Freezer and the Ginyu Force begins right there Freezer pretty much watching the action while the Ginyu Force you know try to beat the um, Earthlings back Vegeta who is um, powering up, you know, they hold, the Ginyu Force is doing their whole one-on-one -on -one belt, Gildo pretty much taken out pretty quickly, and Raccoon is actually beaten by Vegeta pretty fairly easily due to the um, power boost she got from Guru in this timeline. And well, with that, with that, the um, rest of the Ginyu Force decide to basically fight as one, and things start to look a little bit more bleak for our heroes. Our heroes getting a bit of wear and tear from the fight, and just when you think they're gonna win, Goku's ship arrives, and he joins the fray, and both he and Princess Vegeta pretty much mop up the Ginyu Force with no trouble. Frieza right, right there, um, livid, and, you know, see, seeing, um, not only Vegeta being able to take on most of the Ginyu Force pretty much single-handedly, but this, this other guy who looks like some Saiyan he defeated in the past, just 
ups and defeats Captain Ginyu? Well, well, Vegeta, it seems you've been out making friends. So tell me, monkey, who are you? I'm Son Goku from Earth. I'm a Saiyan. And, well, oh, very good, monkey. I got some more monkeys to play with. I take it that one there is your little brat. He has the stench of monkeys all over him, referring to Gohan. And with that, the battle breaks out between them and Frieza. And meanwhile, Piccolo has come across Guru's house. Where, um, he's pretty much met Nail who, as we know, pretty much looks a lot like him, and Guru suggests they do the Namekian fusion and help the armed warriors of Earth. And, well, you know how that went. Yes, 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 I can do this. I can win. I feel great. Oh, yes, yes. And the fused Piccolo and Nail fly off to join the battle. Meanwhile, things for our heroes are looking pretty bleak with Frieza, who's already in his final form. He was having quite a bit of trouble with um, Gohan, Goku and Vegeta teaming up and pretty much realized he had to go straight to his final form just to keep the trio at bay. Once he hit his final form, Vegeta Goku, Gohan, Krillin, everyone was feeling the sting. And well, as for Dende, yeah, he kind of got wiped out. Frieza witnessing his ability to heal everyone, uh uh, not happening. Which was good in a way. Mind you, Vegeta's, um, Full potential that was awakened by um, Guru is still kicking in and taking effect, just like it did for Gohan and Krillin in the original anime. You know, from them barely being able to stand up to the Ginyu Force, and suddenly they're on par battling with Frieza. So obviously, the um, when you get your um, potential unleashed by Guru, it doesn't always come through. It doesn't always take its full effect right away I suppose because yeah they never got any more power ups after that mm. and well with that Vegeta's sort of feeling a sort of hopelessness with the battle with Frieza that you know no matter what they, they can do they're not going to be able to put Frieza down. And meanwhile, Piccolo has joined the battle, but he hasn't made much difference. He's um, getting his clock pretty much cleaned as well. And, well, our heroes are just about on their last leg. Vegeta is just feeling that sort of hopelessness that he felt both during his childhood with his father, you know, being told he was worthless simply, simply for being born a different sex and simply you know and of course Frieza did him no favors at all in this timeline it's just it's always been one one tall mountain after the other for this Vegeta and well she's hitting that despair that sense of hopelessness but then something happens some yellow sparks begin shooting from Vegeta, just coming from her. This sense of hopelessness has turned into absolute rage. Frieza, you took everything from me. My planet, my race, my birthright, my family.
and well, the dam broke. It is Super Saiyan time for our version of Vegeta. Frieza, never witnessing this transformation before, is just absolutely, well, he, he's terrified. He's terrified at this transformation. Never seen it before. And before Frieza can really react to for <laughs> Vegeta, what is, ah! Vegeta is straight up gut punch Frieza and is on the offensive. And she is not letting up at all. None of this um, being baited to um relate to um letting Frieza use his full potential this Vegeta doesn't seem to have that weakness she just wants to end this Fre Frieza cannot even fight back at this point Vegeta hits him so hard he's going through the um, next mountainside out the other side and into another one. And Frieza just looking up at horror at this, at this Super Saiyan Vegeta. Oh my God. And Vegeta powering up a powerful attack that would later become Final Flash. Please Vegeta. Don't do this! How would you like to rule at my side? It's too late for all that, Frieza. You're finished! Final Flash! And Frieza, just like that, is no more. And I think that is where we're going to end things for now. So what did you guys think? Did you enjoy this part? Was it action-packed enough? Did you enjoy that Vegeta in this timeline is the first Super Saiyan. Do you like my version of Vegeta? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll definitely definitely be back with a part five. And you know what does this mean for Goku and his friends with this Vegeta around? Are they actually safe? Will this Vegeta will this Vegeta continue to be, you know, an alright person? Or, will she be an even greater evil than what Frieza was? You know, we'll certainly find that out in part 5 when we continue What If Vegeta Was Female? Alright guys, catch us later.